Welcome to Psych Talk for primary care providers, where our esteemed faculty members will provide you with invaluable insights to seamlessly integrate into your daily practice. Today, Dr. Dustin DeMoss talks to us about alcohol addiction disorder. He goes over the consequences of chronic alcohol use. Hi, my name is Dustin DeMoss. I'm an associate professor of psychiatry in North Texas. And today I'm gonna be talking about the medical complications of chronic alcohol use. Um, The World Health Organization and many other organizations have pretty much divided on what is safe or what is appropriate uh, or what is healthy alcohol use. Today we're going to be talking about the medical complications of beyond that. What is the consequences of chronic severe alcohol uh, use or misuse? One easy way to think about that is think about all the things the alcohol touches after you take a sip, Uh, beginning with the mouth, going back to the esophagus, think about the stomach, think about the liver and pancreas, and then think about the intestines. All right, and once you get to the intestines, it's really helpful to think about all the nutrients that is gonna be blocked from being absorbed. And so you also wanna think about nutritional deficiencies as well as endocrine problems related to chronic alcohol use. So for example, the first thing that alcohol touches when you take a sip is your mouth. And so what that does, the direct cytotoxic effects of alcohol in your mouth, it reduces the pH in your mouth, uh, which then alters the microbes in your mouth. Um, And that can have a deleterious effect on salivary glands causing them to dry up, and you have dental uh, issues and periodontis um, related to, to alcohol use. As you travel down to the esophagus, Again, alcohol has direct uh, effects on the mucosa lining of the esophagus, as well as the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. Initially, it causes a relaxation of that tone, uh, allowing gastric acid to spur up into the, into the esophagus, causing uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Chronic use, however, tightens that a little bit, and so you have other consequences of uh, alcohol use within the esophagus. Now, going down into the stomach itself, you can have gastritis from the direct effects of alcohol on the gastric lining, as well as um, peptic ulcer disease because it also affects that that lower um, uh, sphincter as well. And so um, what people don't realize, however, is other things can cause peptic ulcer disease, such as helicobacter pylori. And interestingly enough, and I'm I'm not advocating people drink alcohol, but people who have moderate alcohol consumption actually have a better chance of getting rid of H. pylori infections. Uh, So that's kind of an interesting tidbit. Now moving down a little bit further, you hit the um, liver and the pancreas. Now we all know that uh, chronic alcohol use disorder ultimately ends in a bad liver and uh, and cirrhosis. Um, And the way it does that is it causes a lot of um, fibrosis in the liver and in the pancreas, it causes the pancreas to start releasing uh, enzymes too early. Uh, the job of the pancreas is to, to help digest food. Well, chronic alcohol use causes the cytoskeleton of those enzymes to be unstable, and so therefore, they release those, those digestive enzymes on the pancreas itself, which is why alcohol is one of the leading causes of pancreatitis in the United States. Moving down to the intestine, it really affects the ability of the intestinal lining to absorb vital nutrients, um, specifically thiamine um, and and other uh, essential vitamins. And so when you think about alcohol use disorder, you always have to include vitamin deficiencies in that that patient, Um, especially the B vitamins and thiamine being one of those, because that can have deleterious neurologic effects um, from chronic alcohol use. And the last point I want to make is back to the neurological effects of chronic alcohol use. Um, You have to worry about thiamine because you can have what's called a Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, uh, which is treated by intramuscular thiamine followed by uh, oral absorption of thiamine. Um, But also, alcohol itself has direct um, neurotoxicity effects, specifically on those more fatty uh, parts of the brain, and you think about white matter because they have a lipid barrier making those connections um, you know, faster. But as one continues to drink long term, 
then that fat layer becomes dissolved and you have a lot of neuronal damage leading to white matter disease um, in, the, uh, in, in the frontal cortex itself. So those are some, just an approach to uh, think about medical complications when uh, you're encountering somebody with chronic alcohol misuse or use disorder. And the way to think about it is just from the head down, what does alcohol touch? It touches the oral uh, mucosa, the esophageal lining, the stomach, the liver, pancreas, and intestines. And then you have to think about the complications of malnutrition and vitamin deficiencies in people who use alcohol chronically.